Hello everyone, Nick again here with Scott and Dickie. This week's technical video is actually a bit of a revisit. Back to a video we did a few weeks ago where we covered the differences between Gen 3 and Gen 4 LS engines and what it took to put one inside of the other vehicle. We actually got a lot of traction on this video online and we really appreciated all y'all asking questions and making comments. One of the questions we got was from one gentleman who sent us a message who said, you asked or you told us about putting the Gen 3 knock sensor where the Gen 4 knock sensor went when you're putting a Gen 4 engine in a Gen 3 car. He seemed a little bit confused about a couple things. He wanted a little more information on what it took to actually get that done. And he had a few other questions and we'd like to cover them here to kind of put some myths to bed. Now again, to cover really quickly, when you're putting a Gen 4 engine in a vehicle that originally came with a Gen 3 LS, the easiest way to do it is to not try to convert the computer and the wiring system to match the engine. A lot of that stuff you end up with just a bunch of electrical gremlins, it's very expensive, it's a nightmare. The easiest way is, for instance, a 98 to 02 Firebird, you're actually gonna keep the LS1 PCM and the wiring harness, and you're gonna put the LS3 engine in, and you're just gonna convert a few things on there to adapt certain sensors and you know certain signals, and then retune the computer. Easiest, simplest, and cheapest way to do it. And part of that is putting this knock sensor inside of this block. This is an old trashed block here. I'm sure some of y'all are taking a look at some of these cylinders and you're going, gee whiz, I hope you're not building that. You're right, we're not. This is actually a trash block I pulled out of the scrap pile shortly before it went to the junkyard. So <clears throat> we can ruin this all we want. No big deal, it's never gonna go in a customer's car. Now, the difference here is the thread pitch. 10 millimeter thread on the LS1 style knock sensor, eight millimeter, I believe, on the Gen 4 knock sensor. Now, if you're wondering, can you use the Gen 4 knock sensor and just wire it in and make the computer talk to it? Not really, we've seen a few people that have tried it out. They didn't really get that great of results. You really have to be an expert tuner to do that. So there's a good chance if you know how to do that, if you're one of the few, you're not watching this video anyway. This is for us garage guys, just like me. Easiest way is to stick with these and redrill the block. Couple tidbits we'd like to give you. The customer that asked this question, he had one of these in the video. If you do this, Make sure you have a tuner who is well aware of what you have done and what needs to be retuned. You actually have to adjust the sensitivity of the computer because it's, no it's no longer in the valley, it's over to the side of the block. They still function, but the signals can be a little off. These are very sensitive. They actually work kind of like a microphone, you know, when you're watching America's Got Talent, someone screaming into one of these things. It works very much the same way. So they are sensitive, they do need to be set up properly. You need a tuner who's familiar with it. A lot are, you just need to make sure when your project is done and you're ready to have it tuned, your tuner is aware of what you have done. Another one is we had people ask us, they said, hold on, I've seen people do this before, but they didn't re-drill in the same sensor. They used a, a boss back here and I don't have to drill at all. It threads in perfectly. Like why, why can't I use this? You actually can. The problem is once some cylinder heads go on here, some headers start wrapping around, this gets dangerously close to a lot of heat and headers actually put off a bit of a pinging sound on their own. It's not the same pinging in a cylinder, it's just the natural effect of a thin tube steel header. You'll actually catch a false knock is what they call. So if you can make it work, you can make it work. Most of the time we hear that people can't when you're putting swap headers, even exhaust manifolds. This is too close to the exhaust has to make it work. That's why this little bung is down here on the bottom side of the block, really close to the oil pan. So. Today, we got a drill, we got a tap, and we have a block that we don't care if we do it wrong. Let's take a look and see what it takes to do this. Now, real quick, before we get started, I wanted to give you guys kind of a tip. This is what they call a blind hole, meaning it actually does bottom out. It doesn't go all the way through, so you do need to drill this to a depth. I use the threads of the sensor we're about to you know, drill and tap for as a bit of a guide. I think it's right at about 10 or 12 millimeters. And the trick is to use some masking tape to kind of put that guide on the drill bit. As you can see here, we are right on the money. Now, we're only drilling a little bit bigger than this hole, so this actually isn't gonna be that tough. We're gonna keep the speed slow. We're gonna do this nice and easy. You can do this in both aluminum like this block and of course cast iron sharp blocks as well. So, let's dig in. That 
that's it. So, once you do that, you want to clean some of this out. I did a terrible job of that, but it's still, it'll be right. <laughs> now you want to use the tap here. Let's see. Again, nice and easy. We don't want to go too fast. Make sure we do this nice and steady and straight. We get a couple turns going here. To get it started. There we go. Once you get it started, you'll notice it'll want to bind up. When you're tapping a hole, you back it off about a quarter to half turn every few turns. And this helps clean out some of that trash that you're actually cutting out of the metal here. Looking pretty good. You want to clean out that hole as well. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> and look at that. Like it came from the factory. Perfect. And it really is about as simple as that. Now, of course, you're going to do this to both sides of the block. And like I said, take your time. Take it easy. We'd hate to hear about a customer damaging their own block. To cover a few things, it is usually easier to do this outside of the car. Some people like to pre-fit the engine to see if this gets in the way of motor mounts or steering or anything like that. 99% of the time we hear this, this works out great and doesn't get in the way of anything. So you shouldn't have any issues. Another thing to keep in mind, the tap size you're going to use is in 10 millimeter by one and a half pitch. Usually when you go to your uh, auto parts store, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever you're going to get this, you can actually get this tap with the matching drill bit that you need. If not, the drill bit size is an eight and a half millimeter, and that's what we used here, actually. We really appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our tech videos. We actually really appreciate that customer messaging us, asking to further elaborate on this process, because you're right. This was actually a pretty useful piece of information that we really didn't cover. That was a pretty convoluted video. There was a lot going on and we missed a pretty important step and some pretty important questions. One last thing. Every once in a while we get a customer ask, can I just delete knock sensors altogether? This looks like a pain. Believe me, I wish there was a way. They're there for a reason. It is really unsafe to delete the knock sensors from an LS application. These do work several times a second to constantly measure for knock. They constantly adjust your timing tables to make sure that you don't do damage to your engine. Doesn't matter if it's a stock 4.8 or one of our 5.3s with one of our PowerMax cams, all the way up to maybe that new LS7 5.70 that some of you were swapping in. So this is definitely an important thing. Please don't skip out on it. Please do it right the first time. Again, thank you for stopping by. Please give us a like, a subscribe, a share. Heck, if you have any other comments and questions, comments below, let us know. We love hearing about it. We try to read them all. See you next week. Thanks for stopping by.